What's up guys? We are back with another Gundam Universe figure taking a look at another Wave 5 figure and a non-Gundam, which is definitely different. Uh, so I'm really excited about this one. We're finally branching out into stuff that's not just various Gundam suits. So today we're taking a look at Char's Zaku 2, of course, Char as the moldy one and only red comet. Uh, we've got him here in standard style packaging for the line. So you've got a red and white motif, of course, because of the color of the suit. You've got uh, an oddball shape window, as usual, with a big, big shot of artwork down there on the bottom. We've got a product shot down one spine, model and name information on the other. And then the back of the box has uh, shots showcasing how the Zaku 2 moves, some of the accessories it comes with, shows him locked in battle with the RX-78. And then, of course, we've got cross cell for the rest of Wave 5 there on, on the bottom. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go. Out of the package, our Char Aznable Zaku 2 mobile suit, the first non-Gundam in the line. And I'm a fan of Xeon suits, so I've kind of been looking forward to this one. That said, there are some oddities with this particular figure when it comes to construction and articulation that kind of leave me wanting. Uh, he does look pretty good, but there are some weird things going on with how this, this figure moves. So uh, let's jump right into it, see what this guy can do, see how he moves around. The head is surprisingly articulated. Uh, it's so low and, and wide that I was curious if it would move much at all. And it, it moves some, it's not a ton. It can lift up a little bit to look down and then it can kick backwards to look up. The neck is articulated as well, so it will kind of get it up out of that cavity. Uh, you can tilt side to side, well, tilt side to side a little bit and then uh, rotate it. It pops off easy, which is a good thing because there is a lever inside to manipulate the mono eye. So you can actually move that eye around, which is honestly very surprising. I did not think we would see something like that in this line. Uh, it just seems unnecessary. I don't really use it on many other figures to begin with, but it's cool that it's there. It's an interesting and fun feature. The shoulder armor is on a ball peg, so it can swivel in and out and then, uh, you know, just sort of bobble around, just to sort of cover things up and, of course, be useful. Uh, the same goes for this one. So you can sort of bobble in and out and then you can rotate it. The arms swivel, but they don't go out. And this is, a, this is the problem for me, is that they don't go out. So there's this sort of box armor that sits over top of the joint itself, but it doesn't really move, it, it's a cover. And when you want to move the arm out, well, it stops. So there's no place for it to go. It just sort of sits there. And that's definitely unfortunate because it really limits a lot of the posability with this figure uh, in many respects. It's not the biggest deal, but at the same time, it is a weird problem to have. Uh, other figures of other lines with this kind of figure would have a joint that actually moves into the the arm cavity in some fashion, whereas this one it sort of lifts up over because it's like a ball peg that goes into the arm. So it's awkward and it's not all that useful. You know, you with posing you'll be able to hide that limitation, but at the same time it might be a little bit frustrating. Uh, we do have a bicep swivel We've got double jointed elbows, and despite all this armor, I mean, they still are able to get those arms up really good. So same great range that we expect to see there. You've got the ball pegs at the wrist, so up and down and swivel. At the torso, it's kind of par for the course. You've got a little twist here and there just to give them a little bit of attitude, and then you've got a little bit of crunch forward. The tubes that hit the crotch also peg into the backpack, so they kind of keep this figure all together, really. The skirt pieces will uh, go up and out about that far, and then this piece actually swivels out to the side. So the leg goes out about that far, and it kicks forward. Uh, I, I have been knocking these skirt pieces off quite a bit, messing around with this guy. It's not a huge thing. I mean, I do it on almost all the other figures anyway, but just, you know, watch out. They just peg in there. Uh, you've got a thigh swivel, so you can twist up there, and then we've got double jointed knees, they're big honking knees though, so just like most other legs in this line, they, they only go about that far. There is a surprising amount of ankle articulation down here though. You've got kick up and down, uh, you've got rotation too, but then you've also got some serious, serious rocker for these monstrous feet. Uh, so they were able to sneak something in there. It kind of helps offset some of the negatives when it comes to the arms and the torso. It's not enough to save everything, but it's a nice touch. The big deal for me with this guy is, is definitely the arms. It's just kind of difficult to pose him around because of that. The mono eye is a nice touch, but he is definitely one of the more locked down figures uh, in this line for sure. 
Now, aesthetically speaking, this guy is, is pretty solid. It's another instance of it being really interesting, though, at least compared to some of the other figures in the line. This line is not known for them being very heavily painted, or in some cases, you know, very painted at all. This figure, though, is definitely among the, uh, the figures that have almost zero paint on them. Uh, so this is very much in line with like a model kit in terms of construction because it's just a bunch of parts slapped together. The only bit of paint that I can really determine on this figure is the mono eye. It has that, uh, that pink metallic eye painted on there. The rest of this, it's all molded plastic, which isn't necessarily a negative. I'm not really complaining about that. I just uh, was kind of surprised that I really didn't see any paint on it. So, of course, I had to talk about it. And I do think, despite that, despite that oddity and that uh, interesting little tidbit there, I do think it looks pretty good. I'm glad we got Shars before we got a regular Zaku, uh, Zaku 2, just because it's my preference. I like the the rosy color with the burgundy torso, well, and black, and then of course the burgundy sort of uh, skirt piece with the very red booster on the back. But it, it's, it looks good. It's, it's a really nice looking figure, and I really like the chunky nature of this guy. I've said that a lot when it comes to this particular line, is that they really hit some of those, some of those figures really well when it comes to being super chunky, especially around the leg area. And that's kind of a hallmark of, uh, of some Xeon suits, is that they have big, fat tree trunk legs. And I think they got that here uh, really nicely. Despite the fact that this figure doesn't really have any paint on it, I'm not complaining about that. Uh, I think the colors are very spot on. This is definitely going to be a figure that I'm curious to see if anybody's going to actually go through the process of panel lining it. Uh, I don't, I don't do it for these. I just, I just don't. Uh, but I bet this guy could be elevated a little bit by just having a little bit of of some black, maybe a little bit of a wash here and there to bring out some of the lines on like the shoulder piece and then some of these lines that are actually down within the legs, just to break things up a little bit because there are some very large fields of of rosy pink colors here. But otherwise. I do like the overall size, the girth, the beefiness. The sculpt is really nicely done. Uh, you've got all sorts of lines that are kind of etched in there just to bring it out, hit the light, you know, hit it with lights, and it's going to sort of uh, break up the sculpt a little bit. And you can sort of see it's not just flat plastic. So there is some detail sort of carved in there. Uh, but he is, he is very devoid of paint, but at the same time, I do think it looks pretty solid overall. Now, as far as accessories goes, the Zaku 2 has basically everything you need at kind of a base level. Uh, there are, well, there's definitely an argument to be made that you could have maybe used a little bit of a different accessory here and there, but I'm pretty happy with what's in this box. So to start with, we get a set of hands. So we've got fists on him in the box, and then you've got a left gripping hand and a right trigger finger hand. We've got the Zaku rifle. And it does have the movable secondary grip, which is pretty useful. And despite the fact that he is kind of hung up when it comes to moving those arms, you can get him to hold uh, in the right hand for the trigger and then actually hold onto this bar with his left very easily, like no problems whatsoever. Uh, the, the ammo canister is removable. There is no paint on this guy, though. It's just flat gray. But I do like the fact that it does have the parts that... You know, I, was, I wasn't expecting it to have this secondary grip. I was expecting this to come off just due to manufacturing purposes, uh, but it does have a little bit more flair than some of the other weapons in the line so far. And then we do get a Heat Hawk. So we get this guy here. It does have a little bit of paint. There is some yellow on it. The, uh, this is where kind of the argument could be made that, that this is not necessarily accurate because it can also peg onto the waist here. But of course, it's ignited, so that doesn't really make any sense. You would need one that doesn't have the yellow on it. But of course, I don't really expect to see that in this line either, so it's not a big deal for me. And it does come with the Tamashi stand adapter as well that we see throughout this line. So he doesn't have a lot of stuff. But at the same time, this is another one of those figures that I feel is a little bit more complete than others because you do get the melee weapon and the gun here. So they didn't give us one or the other. Instead, we got both, which I am always very happy to see. So yeah, overall, this guy is good, but with some bad too. And it's really just in terms of articulation. There are definitely some hangups on this figure that I was just not expecting to see. And it really all comes down to those arms. 
it makes the figure less expressive and just more difficult to pose. I can work around the torso issues because it's kind of a known thing with this line that they're all going to have some sort of issues crunching just based on how they're put together. But the arms on this figure in particular are are hard to work with, and that's that's really all it comes down to. They are they are hard to work with. I do think it looks really good. I really like the big, thick, beefy aspect of this figure. It doesn't really have any paint on it for the 50th time, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter in the confines of this line either. I'm not surprised about it. It's just interesting to talk about. And then it does come with a solid array of accessories in that we get both the melee and the ranged weapon, which I'm always happy to see when it comes to this line. So that's going to do it for this look at the Gundam Universe Shar Aznable Zaku 2. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.